The following short passage has been excerpted from Jim Corbett's Jungle Lore. The jungle folk, in their natural surroundings, do not kill wantonly. Killing for sport is, however, occasionally indulged in, and some animals, notably pine marten, civet cats, and mongoose, will, in abnormal circumstances, kill in excess of their needs. Sport has a wide meaning and can be interpreted in many ways. In this instance that I am going to narrate, it should be interpreted liberally. This instance concerns a big bull elephant and a pair of tigers, and unless my theory of sport is accepted, I can give no reason for the encounter between the lord and the king and queen of the Indian jungle. The encounter received wide publicity in the Indian press, and many letters on the subject were written by renowned sportsmen to the editors of the Pioneer and the Statesman. The theories advanced for the encounter were Old Vendetta, Revenge for the Killing of a Cub, and Killing for Food. None of the writers of the articles and letters witnessed the encounter, and as a similar case from which deductions might have been made had never been known, the theories remained just theories and proved nothing. I first heard of the encounter between the elephant and the tigers, which resulted in the death of the elephant, when the superintendent of the Tarai and Bhavar asked me if I would take 200 gallons of paraffin oil to cremate the body of an elephant. Inquiries at the superintendent's office in Nainital elicited the information that an elephant had been killed by the tigers at Tanakpur on rocky ground where it could not be buried, hence the claim for the cost of cremating it. This information was intensely interesting to me, but unfortunately the trail was ten days old, and furthermore the evidence had been burnt and heavy rain had obliterated all tracks. The Nayab Tahsildar of Tanakpur, who had heard but not witnessed the encounter, was a friend of mine, and I am indebted to him for the particulars that enable me to narrate the incident. Tanakpur, terminus of a branch line of the Awadh Tirhut Railway, and a trading center of considerable importance, is situated on the right bank of the Sarda River, where it emerges from the foothills. Thirty years ago, the river flowed along the foot of the high bank on which Tanakpur is built, but, like all big rivers, where they leave the foothills, the Sarda keeps making new channels for itself, and at the time these events took place, the river was two miles from Tanakpur. Between the main bank, which is about a hundred feet high, and the river there were several small channels, and on the islands formed by these channels there was moderate to heavy tree, scrub and grass jungle. One day, two malhas, or boatmen, living in Tanakpur went to the Sarda River to net fish. They stayed out longer than they had intended, and the sun was setting when they started on their two-mile walk home. On emerging from a dense patch of grass on the last channel that lay between them and the high bank, they saw two tigers standing on the far side of the channel, which here was about forty yards wide with a trickle of water in it. And as the tigers were between them and their objective, the men crouched down where they were, intending to wait until the tigers moved away. These men had seen tigers on many occasions and were not unduly alarmed. This point is important, for when anyone suffers from nerves in a jungle, imagination is liable to play strange tricks. At this stage of the proceedings, there was still a little light from the recently set sun, and the full moon having just risen behind the two men, the tigers standing on the open ground, were in clear view. Presently there was a movement in the grass through which they had just come, and onto their side of the channel stepped an elephant with big tusks. This tusker was well known in the Tanakpur forests, and it had made itself unpopular with the forest department owing to its habit of pulling down the pillars supporting the roof of the Chini forest bungalow. It was not, however, a rogue elephant in the sense of molesting human beings. When the elephant stepped onto the channel, 
and saw the two tigers on the far side, it raised its trunk and trumpeted and started to move towards them. The tigers now turned to face the elephant, and as it approached them, one demonstrated in front of it, while the other circled round behind and sprang on its back. Swinging its head round, the elephant tried to get at the tiger on its back with its trunk, and the one in front then sprang onto its head. The elephant was now screaming with rage, while the tigers were giving vent to full-throated roars. When tigers roar with anger, it is a very terrifying sound, and since the screaming of the maddened elephant was added to this terrifying sound, it is little wonder that the malhas lost their nerve and abandoning their nets and catch of fish sprinted for Tanakpur at their best speed. In Tanakpur, preparations were being made for the evening meal when the sounds of the fight were first heard. Shortly thereafter, when the Malhas arrived with the news that an elephant and two tigers were fighting, a few bold spirits went to the edge of the high bank to try to see the fight. When it was realized, however, that the contestants were coming towards them, a stampede took place, and in a few minutes every door in Tanakpur was fast closed. Opinions on the duration of the fight differed. Some maintained that it lasted all night, while others maintained that it ended at midnight. Mr. Matheson, a retired gentleman whose bungalow was on the high bank immediately above where the fight took place, said it lasted for many hours and that he had never heard more appalling or terrifying sounds. Gunshots were heard during the night, but it's not clear whether they were fired by the police or by Mr. Matheson. Anyway, they did not have the desired effect of stopping the fight and driving the animals away. In the morning, the residents of Tanakpur again assembled on the high ground, and at the foot of the hundred-foot boulder-strewn bank, they saw the elephant lying dead. From the injuries described by the Nayab Tahsildar, it was evident that it had died of loss of blood. No portion of the elephant had been eaten, and no dead or injured tigers were found at the time or subsequently in the vicinity of Tanakpur. I do not think that the tigers at the onset had any intention of killing the elephant. The theory of an old vendetta, anger at the killing of a cub, and killing for food are not convincing. The fact remains, however, that a big bull elephant carrying tusks weighing 90 pounds was killed near Tanakpur by two tigers, and I am of the opinion that what started as a lark by a pair of mating tigers when an elephant tried to shoo them out of his way developed into a real fight. I am also of the opinion that when the second tiger sprang onto the elephant's head, it clawed out the elephant's eyes and that thereafter the blinded animal dashed about aimlessly until it came to the high bank. Here, on the round loose boulders, which afforded no foothold, it was practically anchored and at the mercy of the tigers, who, possibly because of injuries received in the fight, showed no mercy.